to let your meat rest. It needs a little time to kind of uh, have a little bit of a jive. Uh, in the pan here, I've roasted off the legs and they've given me kind of like a little bit of sauce. So I'm just going to take the legs and place them into there because we don't need them anymore, they've just made the sauce for me. See all this meat here we, we pick off in the restaurant, make little terrines or little fritters, or anything you want, or you can slowly cook them in oil, it's the best way of doing it, in, in duck fat, in a really low oven, turn your oven nearly off, leave them in there for overnight, when you come back in the morning this will be like little baby treats, they'll be absolutely lovely. So I've got the, the cherries that I've roasted off in there, I've got figs that we're going to that's hot. We're just going to glaze those in the pan there as well. Do I have a Just, just so it's And then I'm going to... Just going to slice some apples into batons. This is another fresh kind of... Well, I would say summer, but it just doesn't know what... To do. We don't know what summer is anymore, do we? Hopefully if I make this dish, the sun might come out. So, I've just got the figs slowly roasting off in there, with the cherries. Oh, it's super stuff, thank you. Again, I'm going to try on for the, the best thing that we have in season at the moment, is the British English asparagus. This time I'm just going to eat. Slice some small bits like this, to have for all. It's a lovely little element. I'm just going to add that to the pan again pinch of salt and then a new funky uh, little ingredient here. I was going to make black and scotch steaks but I'm, it's no fryer. <laughs> but here we've got something called airbag, it's rehydrated uh, pork skin that um, we use to basically for our black and scotch steaks we have some local Philip Warren uh, black pudding that we roll around these eggs that are cooked for two minutes and ten seconds, boiled then peeled and this is just basically that's going to turn into crackling in the pan. If I can show you now, see that's just popped off and fuzzed up so that I've just made actually, look, you keep adding it and it'll just keep turning into crackling into the pan. So it's going to be a real nice crunch to the to the salad as well. Let's keep that going like that. That can just sit there. And add another little bit of lemon juice just for a little bit of acidity. See, so that's a really soft black pudding here. We roll this like this in our hands, and we flatten it with the with the egg that would be um, boiled for two minutes and ten seconds. We peel it. You place it inside like this. You rub, pick the bottom bit up from the, the top, and pull it around the egg very gently, and then put them in the fridge. Then egg, flour, bread crumb. And then the best way to do it, if you can do it, is a deep fat fry, but you can bake them in the oven. But the, the reason we do it is we have the egg inside really nice and runny. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black pudding to this, just to roast off. It's alright, I can wipe my hands. Yes. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, you need to go to the toilet. <laughs> so I've just let this rest. You can still see the the pigeon the pigeons there nicely, nicely coming down. That's going to be the warm side to go inside it. Once again, I'm going to use the uh, the wild garlic flowers as another essence to this dish. The garlic's really nice, but for me it needs to be boiled in milk to take away the bitterness and harshness in, in garlic. This is just really sweet and really fresh. Um, so you just add a little bit more wild garlic to this. If you want it to be really, really cool, and how I would serve this, I would serve it with friends at home. I'd have that pan sat like that with a nice white cloth on. <coughs> And I'd stir it in the pan, nice, nice plates around it. Looks quite a good photo for sure as well. So, see what I said about earlier? We, I took the bone out of the back. Now, if you get your knife just straight like that, like, lean it into a little side. You'll follow the bone all the way down, right to the back. Slip it down to the table. Keep doing that. Turn it towards you. 
Then you just gently go down and down. So here inside we've got the inner fillet. Some people might have said, to me that's absolutely beautiful, nicely pink for a pigeon. You can't really, a lot of chefs say, I don't mind cooking well and stay for anyone, that's a personal opinion. But for game, it needs to be pink. It's, it's, it's like putting uh, diesel in a petrol car, you just don't do it. For me, that's, that's how it is. So I'm just going to let those rest in there, because the juices from this meat are going to start making the gravy as well. So this is all one pan dishes when you really think about it. So if anyone doesn't like washing dishes, these, these, these dishes are amazing, and I don't like washing dishes. My wife does. No, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, let that one rest in there as well. The knees here, if you wanted to keep them, they chop them up. A little bit of onion, garlic, uh, leek, carrot. A little, um, a little granule added to it. Chop it up and boil it over the over a little heat for about five hours, and you'll make a kind of nice little game broth. Some chopped vegetables through it, and then you have a nice, nice light brothy kind of soup. And you're not wasting anything as well. That's the whole thing we're about at the Trevi. you know, utilising everything. You know, you don't need to be wasting things really. So how many, how many covers have you got down at the Treby Arms? Um, we're a 65 cover restaurant now. We've just extended our bar for our locals because as we are, we do serve kind of op upper end food. My, my aspect of like, when we opened the pub was that I always wanted it to be a boozer and somewhere you could eat really good food. You come in with your wellies, you know, you've just been walked off the moors and say, oh yeah, I have a four, I've got a parfait and, and still feel relaxed and feel like you're at home. And that, that's, that's what we're about, you know. I, for me, I think the era of fine dining is dead. You know, people want to eat casually and 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 feel relaxed. Not, you know, you want you want fine dining. We're in a relaxed environment. Yeah, that's what I think, and it's showing. You know, Tom Courage and the the, the the new era of England. Is, that's how we've eaten in this country for for a long time. We've lost away over 50 years during the war. We lost our culture as a you know being a massive, really you know world respected food country. And then over the time, we, you know, we lost it. And I think now we're coming back to the, the fact that we do cook really well. We've got the best produce in the country, in, in, in Devon and Cornwall. We are absolutely, absolutely amazing. And, you know, and, and the chefs are getting better. The younger generation are, are really keen and really pushing it forward. So it's going to that rest there. I'm going to put that behind me. So let's dress this. You could serve that like that straight in the pan if you really want to, but if you wanted to get a little bit fancy. <laughs> and it's all to do with, for me, it's kind of like, I like my food when it's to do with the, the wildlife, to kind of look where it's come from. So if we've got cocoa venison on the menu, we kind of do it with like chocolate sauce, it looks like it's come out of mud and it looks like the hoof traps have left. And that's how I figure as an artist as well, you know. Chefs is about the taste and really important about tasting food, but it is really important about uh, an art form for people's eyes. So, place this down here like that. Got a nice caramelised fig. Some little cherries, some of the wild garlic flowers. Putting onto the plate. Then around here we've got all the like little crunchy bits of crackling. Just for a little bit of texture around the plate. And just to finish this dish off for me, some people won't use, but I find it's such a rich bird. Tiny little bit of crumbled goat's cheese just to give it a little kind of sweet and soury kind of taste to the dish. <coughs> and then to finish it off, 
somewhere in here. We've got some free crown wild garlic. It's a little kind of salad around it. smelling good in the morning I can tell you that. It's a little bit of seasoning around the plate. I think, ah, oh, got a little nostromo. So if you can imagine wild garlic growing in a pigeon kind of getting shot, <laughs> I think that's what's actually going in my head so that would be that there. So there's two lovely little dishes. You didn't have to serve it, I was just saying you could serve it in the pan like that. It would be really nice and simple and I think just as effective if you had dinner people around there. Or a little bit kind of, you know, chefy, I suppose. There's two little dishes there from from me and from the Treby Arms and Sparkle. So, thank you very much. I actually got the apple for this. There we go, guys. Thank you ever so much. Well, thank you, Anton. That was fantastic. Cheers, Steve, no worries. If anyone would like to come up, you know, feel free to just come up and have a chat, to answer any questions, talk about the Treby Arms. Going to be here just tidying down a bit. Yeah? Yeah, it's quite lovely.